On today's episode of Hit the Ropes Podcast, Jimmy Uso is going to the penitentiary, Corey Graves is in the midst of some emotional chaos, and D-Generation X is the newest addition to the WWE Hall of Fame. In response to this great honor, they have two words for you. Suck it! Tonight's main event. Welcome to Hit the Max. In this corner, from New Milford, Connecticut, your WWE mentor, Dan, the man, Maloney, and his opponent, from Toledo, Ohio, the filthy casual himself, Chris Hogan. Let's get it on. Today's date is February 19th, 2019. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hit the Ropes Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Holcomb. And I'm Dan the Man Maloney. And we're here to bring you all the saucy deets on everything world wrestling entertainment this week. For those of you unfamiliar with the show, this is your weekly WWE podcast where Dan, the diehard fan, and I, your filthy casual... Run you through our Raw, SmackDown, and NXT recaps, give you the latest wrestling news, and discuss a topic about the world of wrestling for your amusement. If that sounds like a good time, be sure to hit like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and rate well elsewhere. It really does help us out. You can find us on uh, Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube currently, and uh, we're working on Spotify right now. And for those of you unaware, this is a spinoff show of our flagship title, Hit the Books podcast, which is a comic books and comic book media focused podcast with a friend of mine named Emery Saunders um, that we have been doing for about two-ish years now total. Uh, And we thought uh, it was a great opportunity to start uh, bringing something else to the table and introducing a new show. We're still on the same Hit the Books channel on YouTube, so if you're searching for us, make sure you check the Hit the Books channel, because we are under that umbrella. Uh, We're getting the website all set up for it. Our RSS feed is available for the, the website, so if you go on to Stitcher, on iTunes, and eventually Spotify... The Hit the Ropes podcast will be separate from the Hit the Books podcast, but we're all under the same channel umbrella uh, on YouTube just because of the way it's arranged. And uh, on social media, you can always uh, reach out to us at HTVVids on Twitter. You can reach out to us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash hit the books. And you can reach out to us uh, via email uh, by emailing hit the books vids, V I D S, at gmail.com. You can also feel free to check out our website htbvids.com uh, where you can find links to all of these things that are very convenient and easy to use and uh, we'll probably save you some time if you can't remember what I'm saying right now and last but not least we do have a Patreon page uh, if you go to patreon.com forward slash hit the books uh, you can support the show and our other show hit the books um, by making a small contribution either monthly or one time it really does go a long way to helping us out uh, pay for the computer programs uh, that we use to edit everything and uh, compensate us for a little bit for the time we uh, kind of spend on this fun hobby of ours uh, that we like to share with you and entertain you with so if you feel so generous uh, feel free to check out our patreon page no obligation it's all free if you don't want to contribute and you aren't interested in the tiers we got listed there Feel free to continue showing up to the show, watching us, listening to us, contributing to the conversation via Twitter, via Facebook, uh, via email, what have you. We really do appreciate you, and we want to thank you for being here with us. Now, without further ado, let's get into the show. Um, For those of you unfamiliar, our typical uh, format is that we jump into a quick recap of all the shows uh, from the previous week. We're recording this just after the pay-per-view, so... There's a little bit of information we're going to have to try to restrain uh, on the part of this episode so we don't spoil it for next episode, Um, but that will be coming quick behind. We're a little bit late this week just because we had to get everything set up for the new show, and it took a little more time than we were expecting, but we will be back on track, and you can expect a weekend release going uh, forward uh, for this show and then your typical Wednesday, Thursday release for Hit the Books podcast, our comic book show. Um, We'll talk about our recaps of the shows. Then we'll talk about the latest news, very similar to Hit the Books podcast, and then we'll end the show with a topic of our choosing about the world of wrestling. Um, 
Yeah, I think I covered everything. So, Dan. <laughs> covered a lot. <laughs> Let's get into it. First up, we got Raw. Now, uh, it seems like this week we had uh, kind of a weak showing from pretty much everybody, uh, more or less, just because they're getting ready for the pay-per-view at this time. And um, clearly, they don't want to risk injuring their top talent before the big show. Uh, kind of like what happened with Mustafa Ali and his injury and why he will not be at the pay-per-view. Um, but uh, we still had some interesting dynamics and some development to the story just before the pay-per-view. Uh, I think the biggest one was the opening with Becky Lynch. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had Triple H come out. Uh, and prior, we had t talked about how we were hoping that this kind of dynamic... Uh, between Triple H challenging Becky Lynch and suggesting that she was scared and that's why she wouldn't get the doctor examination. She was just taking the easy way out, being uh, trying to be a martyr and blah, 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 and not facing her fear or potential fear of Ronda Rousey. Well, they didn't go with that kind of deep look like we were kind of hoping on last episode. Instead, they went kind of with the more shallow approach. However, it's probably the more smart approach on a show basis just because now they have something for her to do up until you know wrestlemania and um basically the way they set it up is the the whole show um s surrounding i think it was just raw right it wasn't smackdown also mm -hmm. was it yeah just raw just raw um they come out they have this big speech they say hey you got your examination everything's good Okay, well, lift your suspension. All you need to do is apologize to Triple H and Stephanie. And Becky Lynch, you know, she's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. And she's debating about it the whole show. And they keep cutting to her, you know, throughout the show where she's thinking about it and getting input from, you know, various characters like Alexa Bliss and a few others. And um, in the end, she does do the apology to, you know, she sucks up her pride and does the apology like Triple H and Stephanie wanted. And instead of like rubbing it in her face or anything like you'd expect from a wrestling show, uh, they just say, that's it. And they turn around, they walk off and they're like, no, you're going to WrestleMania. See you there. You know, they walk off. But then the big man himself comes out <laughs> at the end of the show. The real man. Vince McMahon comes out and in uh, glorious fashion decides that he won't let this behavior stand. Mm. And he suspends her for enough time to push her outside of the WrestleMania window mm -hmm. and says that since we need a replacement, how about Charlotte Flair? Mm, of course. Epic troll job. Epic troll job. Yep. Typical behavior from Vince McMahon. Uh, it was nice to see him get out there and put his face to it at least instead of leaving Triple H and Stephanie out there to take that kind of heat because you know this is coming from Vince. Uh, I, I wasn't. I didn't quite understand why they went in the direction with Triple H and Stephanie that they did here. I didn't quite understand what their roles were here. They, they were kind of they they were kind of iffy. I, I couldn't tell if they were taking on a face role where they were kind of interacting with the antihero as concerned bosses that were just looking out for their performer and they really wanted the match to happen, mm -hmm. or if they were uh, sort of doing what Vince McMahon originally did with Austin back in the late '90s, which is sort of put on that corporate face that concerned face when really they were out to sabotage her obviously we know how becky felt about that whole thing uh, but it's it felt a little too easy that she was able to get that match back that easily just by saying sorry very obviously begrudgingly um, but i ended up liking the swerve with vince mcmahon coming out i think that that uh, i think that they kind of blurred the, rea the the lines between reality and fiction with the perception that a lot of fans have that Charlotte is the is the favorite that Vince is always the one making the decisions that the fans don't like that Vince is always the one that's you know putting hashtag shoehorn Charlotte into the championship matches where she doesn't belong um, they've dubbed her the corporate champion they're, they're also going to be taking a little bit of the negative attention away from Ronda Rousey um, that's a person that they really want to keep as a top baby face very clearly she doesn't act as a heel she she always plays by the rules and she was getting some heat there after Royal Rumble once Becky Lynch um, named her as her chosen opponent for WrestleMania. So I think they're di directing some of that away toward Charlotte, who is one of the best heels in the company, by the way. Absolutely. No doubt about it. She's yep. totally comfortable in that and, role. And, and definitely the best character. among the women. Yeah. She, by she, far. She takes it to another <laughs> level. So she's more than prepared to handle that heat. She's channeling it away from Rousey. And now you've got a hill to climb for Becky Lynch for these next two months. I wasn't sure that 
Rhonda and Becky could go back and forth and do promos every week for the next, you know, seven, eight, nine weeks leading to WrestleMania and keep it fresh and keep it interesting and keep the energy up. I think this is a great way to do, accomplish all of those things. And I'm really interested to see how Becky gets out of this situation. <laughs> yeah, well, because I am actually concerned, which is exactly how I should be feeling. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think it's a it's, it's a solid dynamic. It's not as deep as what I was hoping for, but it's it's a solid dynamic that I can ride along with and enjoy. And uh obviously gives these these characters something to do and something to pine mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. you know it's that seems to always be the challenge after you know the lesser pay-per-views leading up to the main pay-per-view which is wrestlemania um it's just it always feels like okay we know exactly who's going to be in the match now what you know now they're just gonna dance around each other for a few months and then have our big event and mm-hmm. then we're just gonna have to do it all over again well, yeah, to a to a small extent, yeah, but uh, doing something like this gives them a, a workaround where they can keep it entertaining and keep it fresh and kind of keep pressing the the, the storyline a little bit further uh, prior to WrestleMania and keep the people entertained for the weekly shows. And let's face it, Raw's a, a little weak right now, especially with the uh, you know Monday Night Rollins not available mm, yeah. for for a lot of this time here. So we will see what happens with that. But I thought it was a a, a solid way to handle it, if not a little disappointing on the end that I was hoping for a little more Mm -hmm. uh, last Mm -hmm. week. But maybe that's too much to expect from a wrestling show. Sometimes the easy, shallow option is just the best option. And in this case, I think they're trying to avoid taking too many risks with the heat that that Charlotte has on her already. The excitement that's around Becky trying to keep the man character held down by some kind of authority um, to keep the intensity up around her. So I think they're just going with the save option here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had uh, a three man a three man tag team match between Strowman, Balor, Angle versus uh, Bobby Lashley, Corbin, and McIntyre. Um, this one resulted in Angle's team winning. Um, how do you feel about this whole dynamic where Corbin and McIntyre are constantly attacking Kurt Angle and belittling him and making him do 600 German suplexes on that <laughs> nasty neck of his? I'm really starting to get completely bored of Strowman. I'm getting completely bored of Corbin. These are guys that I really like for their potential. Um, we've seen so much of Strowman and Corbin these last few months ever since uh, Corbin's sort of betrayal of Strowman at uh, at Crown Jewel. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting really tired of this dynamic. This match didn't do very much for me. It dragged on way too long, and then when I thought it was finally over, they decided to restart it. So <laughs> yeah. this was about 30 minutes where it really felt like basically nothing happened. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this 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 is a match that was kind of weird in terms of you know WWE wrestling because initially. I think it was McIntyre that got the pin on Finn, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but he had his foot on, he put his foot on the rope or something like that. Maybe I'm mixing up different yeah, matches. Yeah, no, with you're him. right. Yeah, you're right. Finn but had so, his foot on the rope. Somebody got a foot on the rope, mm-hmm. but they were just rolling with it. You know, the bad team won, mm-hmm. you know. And then they come out like it's the NFL or something. Like, no, we got a review. We got a review from mm-hmm. New York. We got to get this set up, you know. <laughs> and they review it real quick. And they say, well, we, we just can't determine the oh, victory on this. So let's do it all again. <laughs> and so they have them continue fighting. And yeah. then the Angle's team ends up winning because of that. And it's like usually with WWE, they're just like, yeah, they're doing that on purpose to make it look like, oh, they unjustly won. They didn't deserve to win, blah, blah, blah. And you can kind of ride that on, uh, as the um, you know antagonistic characters that they are uh, going forward. But instead, they had like a weird moment of like real sport simulation where the refs come out and they're disagreeing and they're like oh no no he had his foot on the rope oh no no i didn't see it and, you know that, that was it was just a weird thing to do mm. I, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me <laughs> unless you're like really trying to sell this is a real sport thing yeah like i don't i don't know this felt like the definition of a filler match and it felt like the restarting was just because they didn't have a whole lot of other ideas of how to fill their three hours this is a yeah. continuous problem with raw i really think they need to shorten raw I think every single week you're seeing the results of having three hours to fill when you've only got an hour, hour and a half of good material. And this is the kind of thing you have to do to fill those three hours. So this really, this didn't do it for me. Yeah, it was, 
you know, I love Finn. I think there's a lot of top talent on that little group there. You know, I think Strowman is obviously the big scary monster as he should be. You know, Finn Balor is awesome. I, you know, I'm a huge Finn Balor fanboy, so of course I think he's awesome. Uh, Bobby Lashley, you know, uh, fans don't seem to like him very much, but he is a big intimidating force. Um, Corbin is like the perfect villain character, the perfect weasel, you know, that's just fun to watch be bad, you know, eminently hateable, which is a very good quality. Yep. He's got a he's got an old school heel heat thing yeah, going and you don't see it very much he's anymore. Perfect. He's so good at being bad that you kind of suspect he's just an asshole in real mm-hmm. life. Uh, kind of. <laughs> Uh, I won't say it. <laughs> I'll hold my tongue for a second. And then uh, McIntyre is just this giant, intimidating force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, he still likes to get to do a little ball and get in your head because I'm the smallest little Scottish man around. When he does uh, kind of have the big, imposing stature about him, he's way more intimidating. He's way more cool as a villain. And, you know, I buy into it. But this match was just, it was, it was painful. And every time I watch... Kurt Angle wrestle it just hurt, physically hurts me because I just see him doing these German suplexes over and over and over and over and that's all he does and he's just smashing his neck again and again and again and I just can't help but wince knowing how many neck injuries he's had mm-hmm. and knowing how old he is it's just it's it's painful for me to watch mm-hmm. so I don't think we got to touch more on it I think no. it covers everything I um, don't want to think about it anymore, but we'll see what <laughs> happens. Uh, next up, uh, we had a little Elias bit with Callisto, uh, where he hits Callisto with his guitar. Mm-hmm. You can speak more to that because I didn't see it on the Hulu cut. It was spectacularly, spectacularly stupid, um, as most Elias segments have been the last few weeks. Unfortunately, as much as I like him as a character, they really need to figure out a direction for him that makes sense. I don't really know why they're putting um some lower card shall we say guys out there with him um this segment again just seemed like filler material but i will give credit to elias and Callisto. the guitar shot was the best guitar shot i've ever seen on wwe television <laughs> it was square in the back that thing exploded on impact it left Callisto with some real injuries that was uh that was a good guitar shot so it had that going for it yeah that's about and, all i can say about it though and look i'm a guitarist I know how hard it is to smash a guitar. You really have to put some fucking force <laughs> behind that, and it has to hit something very sturdy to actually fracture and break apart. So if you're getting a huge, explosive guitar smash, mm-hmm. Callisto probably took a fair amount of pain and damage <laughs> with that hit. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't feel the need to do that. But uh, you get paid well, too. So there's that. Uh, next up, uh, we have, uh, Ruby Riot defeating, uh, Nikki Cross. Um, of course this means that she's going to be in the pay-per-view and have her, uh, little title match with Rhonda, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Good way to build up Ruby Riot, get her, uh, some momentum going into the pay-per-view. She hasn't had a singles match in t- on TV in a couple weeks, I think. Um, Nikki Cross is, uh, an interesting opponent for her. I really like the fact that they had, uh, they gave them a little bit of time. I think they gave them eight to 10 minutes. And uh, those are two performers I'm really high on. I feel really good about both of them and where they can go if they use them properly. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they showed some good wrestling, showed some of the things that they're good at. So this was a pretty entertaining match for me. Um, but, you, you, you know, the, the end was certainly a foregone conclusion. They're building up the number one contender going into the pay-per-view. So it's a pretty standard formula in that way. Yeah, so it was a good match, solid match. It was enjoyable. I, you know, I like Nikki Cross's whole dynamic where she's just crazy person who just does what she wants Mm -hmm. and doesn't care about winning or losing she just wants to attack somebody Mm -hmm. uh and i enjoy how you know ruby riot is the quintessential you know i don't give a fuck i'm going to cheat and lie and steal and do whatever i gotta do Mm -hmm. to win and be the badass i think i am and Mm -hmm. whatnot so it was was two really cool likable characters doing their thing leading up to a big pay-per-view uh so Thumbs up to them. I really hope uh, they don't kind of ruin the momentum they've been giving Ruby Riot, but Mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And push Nikki Cross, too, while you're at it. (laughs) Nikki Cross. Uh, She just wants to play. Yeah. Next up, uh, we have uh, an Ambrose match. uh, Dean Ambrose against EC3. uh, Kind of a rematch after his very awkward poor introduction where Mm -hmm. Dean Ambrose pretty much stole the show on that introduction. Did not get any less awkward this week. Yep. 
It was still very awkward. AC3, once again, did not talk a whole lot. He did not talk. It's the thing um, he does the very best. And yeah. again, he did not talk. It was very awkward. And, you know, Dean Ambrose gets his pin and that's it. It's It was just there. Yeah. The match definitely existed. I'll give it that. Yep. It, it's, it's a thing. It's on record. It happened. Uh, next up, we had a Nia Jax and Tamina uh, versus uh, Boston Hug and the Riots. Uh, in anticipation of uh, the whole Elimination Chamber main event. Uh, well, I guess the men's is the main event, right? Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. We don't know yet. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It'll Again, an interesting is, match card order on Sunday. We may or may not have already <laughs> watched it, so sorry. Can't wait to find out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Nia Jax and Tamina uh, pin Boss and Hug. I think they pinned Bailey, right? They pinned Bailey. Bailey was pretty much on her own again um sasha's still dealing with that arm injury um from what i've heard from the various rumor mills uh sasha's arm is probably just about healed but they're they're playing it safe they want to make sure she's 100 percent good to go for the chamber on sunday as they should so bailey was on her own and uh and she went on a little bit of a roll there in the middle of the match which i always love to see when she starts unleashing that offense of hers i just love her move set um but she did end up getting pinned with the uh samoan drop so that means Boss and Hug will be one of the two first teams to start the chamber match, while um, Nia Jax and Tamina and the Riot Squad will be in the pods to start the match. Which just means they're going to have to definitely earn it all the way through. Earn it! Mm-hmm. They're going to earn it! They really gotta <laughs> earn it! Because they gotta go in first. The odds are stacked against them, folks. Clearly. <laughs> Stay tuned! <laughs> uh, next up... We had uh, our tag team match with the Revival versus Glorious, where Revival, after earning their opportunity to have a title match with Glorious, they actually win the title match against Glorious. And uh, I know you're a big fan. You're say I, yeah. I like them too, but I'm more <laughs> of a, I, I I like Glorious a little bit more. But you know they've had the championship for a while. Mm-hmm. Might as well pass it on to another great team. Yeah, I mean I got to say uh, this this match really saved the show for me. I mean I was I was on the edge of falling asleep by this point in the show. It was about forty minutes from the end, so we we're about two hours and twenty minutes in when this match started. Um, I I was just I was fading in and out. Uh, I was really having trouble not changing the channel. But uh, Revival and Glorious, those guys put on a fantastic match. They've worked together a lot on the road in house shows. Um, people have reported just great performances from them consistently in the house shows. They finally got a chance to display some of their chemistry in the ring on a TV taping. The crowd wasn't quite all that into it, but you know I couldn't really blame them with the show that they were watching for two hours. They had to be just as exhausted and yeah. disinterested as I was by then. Yeah. But this match was fantastic. So good to see the Revival finally get those main roster tag titles. They really deserve it. I think they're one of the best tag teams in the WWE. They do great character work. And uh, as as uh, as Wilder post Dash Wilder posted on Instagram afterward. If you complain enough, you can achieve anything. So congratulations, <laughs> congratulations to the revival. I was super stoked about that. I will say that was the only moment that got me up off my feet when I was watching Raw. I totally marked out when the revival got the pin with the shatter machine. W- one of the best shatter machines I've ever seen, by the way. Fantastically done. I was super stoked. So this this pretty much saved the show from total disaster for me. Yeah, it was a very solid way to to at least end it with the match, and then obviously the conclusion of the whole uh, Becky Lynch, Triple H, uh, Stephanie McMahon, and then Vince showing up and introducing Charlotte and suspending Becky past WrestleMania. So that was your big ending as a as an entire show. How would you rate it? I gave it a three and a half out of 10. I was ready to give it about a one, but uh, just luckily I'm a big revival mark and they put on a great performance and I really did like the the spin at the end with Vince McMahon showing up. So those two things brought it up to about a three and a half for me. Yeah, I'm going to give it, I'd give it, I give it a four. Uh, Again, I like the rounded ones because everything's so arbitrary. I just don't know how to define it. So (laughs) for me, it's a four. I was I wasn't thrilled. I could I would have happily skipped this show Mm -hmm. and just got the cliff notes Mm -hmm. if I had known what was going to happen. (laughs) Um, I I always like seeing Finn wrestle, so maybe I would have popped in for that. But even that was kind of a just kind of boring dumpster fire Mm -hmm. uh, more or less everyone but finn was a problem there yeah it was and i just i hate watching kurt angle do german suplexes over and over again it's 
Come on. Come on, Kurt. You got Hang him up, bro. Yeah, you, Hang him up. You can be like Triple H where you don't actually wrestle. You're just running things. That's that. When you were doing that, it was fine. It was good. <laughs> it was solid. We enjoyed it. We could do our little you suck chance. It was wonderful. I don't need to see you and your American flag leotard smashing your neck over and over and over again. Mm. Please stop. Uh, next up from SmackDown. Uh, not a whole lot going on during the SmackDown because we had a giant monster match at the end of the show mm-hmm. to kind of determine uh, the pecking order for the men's elimination chamber match. Um, the show started off with a uh, match between Fire and Desire, uh, the Iconics, and the Fabulous Glow. <laughs> what a name <laughs> where uh fabulous glow was victorious after a pretty badass uh split drop mm-hmm. from yeah. Uh, naomi yeah the split leg and moonsault it's uh, a move naomi hasn't pulled out in some time i wish she would use it as a regular finisher because it just wows me every time i see it it was a great ending so fire and desire did eat the pin from that yeah, uh, which means that they will be starting in the elimination chamber against boss and hug yeah which is fine with me i you know i don't really care about you know mandy but i i do like sonia so mm-hmm. i was all about that Big sonia mark over here i do like sonia <laughs> so i like people that have real fighting cred in addition to being decent performers in wrestling whereas mandy is just the decent performer but nothing else is really stand out worthy with her in my opinion mm-hmm. you know Corey graves will definitely disagree <laughs> uh, god's greatest creation but uh, I just don't think she's that interesting or uh, fun to watch in the ring. So that's how I felt about it. And uh, yeah, congrats to Fabulous Glow. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly the best name in wrestling right now. Uh, next up, we had Kofi Kingston uh, being introduced as the replacement for uh, Mustafa Ali, who is out due to concussions. Uh, he experienced, uh, they don't know when specifically, but it was probably between him getting thrown out of the ring and then smashed in a table and then kicked in the face by Randy Orton, I think. It was- yeah, he got a shiner when he got kicked by Randy Orton during their match last week, and I believe he got the concussion at a house show about two days later, and I think he may even have some other injuries uh, besides th- those two to his head. Yeah. Uh, so he's pretty beat up right now. Yeah. Uh, he has taken a beating in pretty much all of his matches lately so it's uh it's a it's it's a bummer that he doesn't get to uh have this opportunity i think he's got a bright future and a ton of potential and a ton of talent this would have been a good showcase for him um but uh kofi kingston i mean that's a great replacement that's a guy that's been around for a while has a lot of respect uh in the locker room uh he's an old hand i think he's one of the longest tenured guys in the wwe as far as still being active he's been there since i believe 2007 so he's been around for some time, and uh, he's a phenomenal performer. So if it was going to be anyone, I really like that choice. Yeah. So um, it was really interesting. I, I thought it was weird that we were going to take kind of the a guy that's from a typically a clownish kind of over-the-top ridiculous troupe mm-hmm. and have him be a serious contender mm-hmm. for this Elimination Chamber match. And I was like, well, clearly he's just going to get squashed right away, you know. But with the way they ended the show was basically having him just make this monster run mm-hmm. being the first entrant into the match and uh try to really instill the credibility that he is worthwhile in this match that he can stand toe to toe with you know aj styles and randy orton and uh samoa joe and all Scored three pins yeah it's unbelievable yeah <laughs> so it was, that was really surprising it was fun to watch too um personally i don't of the three uh members of new day he's probably the least interesting one for me and again filthy casual very lapsed fan just wrong but you know i just i just think he's the least interesting one for me personally not because of his performance or his tenure or anything because i'm not familiar with that Mm -hmm. for me as just the the casual guy he's the one that's the least funny of the group Mm -hmm. and gets the least amount of kind of stage time Mm -hmm. um and Xavier Woods, I know more from other media, just because he has his show up, up, down, down. That Austin he's, Creed. Yeah, and he's on kind of funny all the time and all sorts of podcasts and shows. So I'm very, I'm very familiar with Xavier Woods there, and you know, it's, 
unfortunately he's just kind of in the background mm. as a character he's the guy in the middle he's the middle child that gets ignored while the young child gets pampered and the the older child gets you know all the college money mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it is for me um but i understand within the community he's really loved and well respected and uh, definitely deserves this chance to be in a big pay-per-view event. And I certainly think if you're just looking at the match quality, it had to be Kofi. If it was going to be one of the members of the New Day, I think Big E has some good power moves, but he's got a very limited move set. He's got limited cardiovascular endurance. I don't know if he would be able to perform in this way. Especially Xavier if he has Woods, to start the match. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and Xavier Woods, I would, you know, I love his personality. I think he's got one of the best personalities on screen and off screen in the whole company. Um, but I think that his in-ring skills aren't in Kofi's class. And I think that if they were going to do if they were going to try to keep probably what they had planned for Mustafa Ali and just insert someone into that role rather than scrap everything Kofi was the perfect guy for that so I was a fan of the Kofi choice so yeah yeah, it was really interesting match we'll get to it uh, but first I just want to touch on a little bit of a promo that the Usos had uh, where they're featuring uh, a super kick to the McMiz team uh, in anticipation of their tag team match Um, I I love the McMiz team. I find it so goddamn entertaining. <laughs> and I genuinely hope that they don't lose their title because I love their relationship. And I know I know fans across the WWE universe love the Usos, as they should, because they're great performers. As do I. And they, they have kind of the tenure, just like McMahon does. Um, but I... I just find them so entertaining. I don't want them off my television. <laughs> I want them always on the show. See, that's how I feel about the Usos. <laughs> so we'll see what happens at the pay-per-view. It's a hmm. really good segment, though. I got to say that mic grab when Miz uh, started to talk some trash and uh, and Jay ripped the microphone out of his hand is one of the best mic grabs I have ever seen on WWE television. Mm. And then they delivered perfect on-point super kicks. As usual, Shane takes it fully to the face with absolutely no mm. softness or uh, protection for himself or his health. And so that's why good he's job a on Shane for the beating that he, as usual, takes Full force. What a legend. Cases. What a legend. <laughs> what a legend, man. There's a reason why Usos. everybody everybody loves Shane O'Mac. There's a reason. Yeah, that's why they were chanting Usos through the whole segment. Oh, yeah, they were <laughs> shouting for Shane O'Mac, weren't they? I heard it. You heard it. We all heard it. Everybody heard it. A lot of great people. Don't listen to this guy. But yeah, uh, really fun match. And then we get into the big main event, which took up pretty much the entire show. Mm-hmm. Um, commercial cuts and all, unfortunately. Yeah. I to really, be fair, 60 really, minutes, you got to get a commercial in there somewhere. Yeah, that's true, but <laughs> man, it really annoys me because you miss some great stuff, you know. Um, but we had uh, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy, uh, Kofi Kingston, uh, Daniel Bryan, and uh, Randy Orton all make an appearance, obviously, because they're going to be in the Elimination Chamber, uh, vying for the last entrance and the first entrance spots uh, throughout the show. Uh, I think who was the first to get pinned? Yeah, so it started with Kofi and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And uh, Daniel Bryan went for the running knee, and Kofi caught him with the trouble in paradise. So yep. he scored the first pin, a clean pin over the WWE champion for Kofi Kingston, which set, set the tone off right for me. I couldn't yep. believe what I was seeing. Bold uh, move, Cotton. Second, I believe it was either, I can't remember if it was Joe or Hardy, but I believe it was Samoa Joe that came out next. Um, no, it was, it was Jeff Hardy. So Jeff Hardy came out. They had a little bit of a back and forth. Um, not a good showing from Hardy. He, uh, no. he went down fairly easily and pretty cleanly. Um, as much as I like seeing someone get pinned with the SOS, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, I think they didn't, I think Hardy didn't come out looking great there. No, he uh, has, he's been kind of underwhelming in a lot of his mm-hmm. matches recently, Yeah, Every- which is weird. Cause the, the tail end of last year, they were really pushing him and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. Uh, especially in like what november ish yeah he had a good u.s title run there for a little while and then uh, i think randy orton just broke his spirit and he hasn't been the same yeah oh god that ear hole (laughs) there's a there was one does things to your head man there was one little match promo thing where randy orton came out in his big return i think it was probably his first like on-screen performance since he returned and he comes out and he starts tearing and stretching mm-hmm. uh, Hardy's ear holes from his big gauged ears, mm-hmm. and it was just so disgusting. <laughs> and uh, I might, twisted. I'm pretty sure I imagined it, but I just pictured him like, uh, like sticking his tongue through it and you know, finger fucking his ear that? hole. It was just gross, <laughs> just gross. Ugh. 
so gag worthy. <laughs> um, and so, then so after Hardy went down, so Joe came out. Joe beat up on Kofi for a while, as you would expect that Joe would. Yeah. And then I believe it was the Coquina clutch reversal pin from the part of uh, Kofi yep. that got Samoa Joe eliminated. Samoa Joe was not happy about that. He nope. took Kofi to the outside, yep. kept the clutch on him yep. as AJ Styles was making his entrance. And AJ Styles, being the upstanding Christian man that he is, oh did God. the honorable thing and uh, this protected is why baby Kofi faces suck. and knocked uh, knocked Joe off of Kofi and drove <laughs> Joe to the back. Not good for Styles' chances. He could have had a limp body to go in and pin real easy, but, uh, you know, he'll do the honorable thing. Yeah. And then we had kind of a really cool character moment for Kofi mm -hmm. where AJ Styles trying to be the good guy is like, no, you don't have to do this, man. We, right. don't, we don't have to do this. We'll yeah. go back to the trailer park and we'll <laughs> pop a few beers and we'll we'll just talk about this. You know, you don't have to fight anymore. Yeah. Uh, but Kofi had a, a great character moment where he's like, hey, you're disrespecting me as a man, as a performer. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm ready. 11 I'm years. Ready. He said, yeah. 11 years. I've been waiting for this. 11 years. I'm not waiting anymore. And he said, Fight me, fight me, just great. Yeah, <laughs> powerful character. And he was pushing, he was pushing AJ, trying to get him worked up, and powerful. then, and of course they had Finally. they had their match, and I, I believe AJ pinned him, right? Uh, yes, no, he tapped him out to the calf crusher. Okay, so yeah. they did have they did have an extended back and forth. AJ was mostly beaten on him. Kofi just wouldn't stay down. Um, I think Kofi got out of, I think Kofi might have got out of a phenomenal forearm, but great effort by Kofi. He went over sixty minutes, uh, tapped yeah. out to the calf calf crusher when he had no other chance um xavier woods and Big E came right out brought him to the back he got a standing ovation from the yep. live crowd which was well deserved yep, yep phenomenal performance from kofi and then of course randy orton was the RKO! RKO! rko out of nowhere out of nowhere uh to end the show which i thought it was a little telegraphed because when you saw when you heard randy orton's music hit they just zoomed in on aj's yeah, face that's the, and the fact they were zooming in just on his giveaway. face you knew exactly what was coming but <laughs> i'm never going to complain about an rko out of nowhere it is always entertaining to me uh so styles ate the pin the final pin and randy orton will enter the elimination chamber last uh, yeah on sunday on sunday yeah on this coming sunday yes coming sunday <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was a great show, you know, pretty much all around. Uh, obviously it was pretty, uh, superstar heavy just because that was the main event and it mm -hmm. took almost the entire show, mm -hmm. but even, you know, opening the show, there was some pretty solid stuff, some interesting stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'd give it a solid eight rating. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So, and that, it gave Kofi a really great character moment that he needed mm -hmm. to have me in you know, invested in him as a casual guy that didn't really care about him before. Like now I was, uh, uh correction, am invested in him <laughs> going into this pay-per-view. Uh, -huh. uh, yeah, we totally didn't watch it yet. No, no uh, idea what happens, but I, I was, uh, that created a character moment that made me fully invested in him as a character. I still didn't want him to win because I think Daniel Bryan is amazing, and I, <laughs> I want that hemp belt, and I think his whole new Daniel Bryan, you know, save the planet shtick, his whole cult leader thing with Rowan is fucking amazing. He is the planet's champion, and I don't want it to end. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see if they push Kofi to the top. But I think it's a definitely an intriguing dynamic. How'd you feel about the show? I gave it a nine out of ten. Wow, um, I think it was. I think. You know, the the opening women's tag match I didn't think was great. I think you saw some of the limitations of Carmella and of the Iconics, but um, I really like the way Mandy and Sonya are coming along. I thought Naomi had her best performance on TV in a while, um, so it was okay, That, but it was still the thing that kept this from being just about a perfect score. I thought the Usos showed why they're the best tag team in the WWE for me. Their promo work is phenomenal. Their in-ring work is phenomenal. That segment was absolute fire for me. Um, it was fantastic. I was so happy to uh, to uh, to have seen the Usos uh, showing up like that. They haven't cut a, a promo with that kind of intensity in some time, and you just see that intensity that they have that nobody else has. And then the gauntlet match was absolutely epic. It's going straight to the match of the year list. You might as well put it on the list now, WWE. When you release your match of the year rankings in January 2020, that one's going to be on there. Go ahead and book it. Yeah, that was, it was, that was a fantastic match. Great effort from Kofi Kingston. Um, didn't love the ending, of course. Love the RKO out of nowhere. Generally, didn't love that that was how it ended in that sort of telegraph way. But it was a fantastic performance from everybody involved. So nine out of ten, great job, SmackDown. Yep. 
Um, next up, we have our NXT show. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it uh, this week just because I was busy getting the show set up. So why don't you run us through it? Sure, a quick rundown. So it started with uh, Dominique Dijakovic. I always stumble on that name. Uh, defeating Shane Thorne. This was a pretty decent match. Uh, you got to see the big man show some of his agility. He, 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 hit, uh, he hit a corkscrew off the top turnbuckle, which I did not see coming. So pretty good match. Um... We also had Cassius Ono come out and cut a promo on the live crowd. Uh, ono cuts a very good promo, especially when he's being a dick. And uh, he absolutely was ripping the Full Sail crowd, which actually just made them like him more. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and then Keith Lee came out and was able to one-up him. He hit him with a rolling elbow. And then I don't even remember exactly what Keith Lee said, but I know it was hilarious. So uh, that was entertaining. Br- brief but entertaining. Um, and then following that up was the Street Profits defeating Humberto Carrillo and St- Stacey Irvin Jr. Really good match. I really like Humberto Carrillo. Um, I'm interested to see what they do with him. He's currently wrestling on both 205 Live and NXT. So there's lots of opportunities to check him out, guys. Go check out Humber- Humberto Carrillo. He's 23 years old. He's brand spanking new. He's got tons of talent. He's got a diverse skill set. Um, he sells like a champ. I remember last week they had... Uh, Maybe two weeks ago on 205 Live, they had a number one contender's four-way. Uh, he sold Tozawa's Senton finisher in the ring, rolled out of the ring, stood up, and then face-planted to sell it even further once he was <laughs> off camera. <laughs> so that's the kind of commitment I'm looking for from a young guy. Love Humberto Carrillo. Very nice. Um, so that was pretty entertaining. Uh, after that match, Street Profits cut a promo saying that they wanted the War Raiders. They wanted to take the tag titles off the War Raiders. We're big War Raiders fans, by the yeah. way. Uh, war, war, <laughs> war, war. European Union came out saying that they wanted the tag titles, actually. And then at Undisputed Era came out right after that saying that they wanted their titles back. And um, War Raiders then came out also. So we had four tag teams out at once um, saying that if they wanted the titles, they could go ahead and try to take them. Big brawl broke out. Um, War Raiders started out getting a bit of a beat down, but they they were able to regather themselves and ended up standing tall. So we'll see how NXT handles this in the cup in the next couple weeks. I don't think you can go wrong with Street Profits, European Union, or Undisputed Era. I think those are all worthy number one contenders. I'm interested to see yep. how they decide who it's going to be, and I can't wait for the War Raiders' uh, first title defense because those guys are fun to watch. Um, and then in the women's division, Aaliyah defeated Tainara Conti. Uh, this match was not good. I did not enjoy it. I'm not sure why they just won't give up on Aaliyah. I really am not a believer in Aaliyah. They're seeing something I'm not seeing. Uh, I don't think she's great in the ring. I think her I think her gimmick right now is basically a dollar store Carmella. I'm not feeling it with her at all. Um, this match was just not entertaining for me, but uh, Shayna Baszler and Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke, the three of the four horsewomen of MMA, came out and uh, cleared the ring and cut. And I thought Shayna cut a pretty good promo on the mic afterwards saying, don't piss us off or <laughs> you're going to end up the same way. That's Shayna doing Shayna things. And uh, I really enjoyed that part. And then the main events, Ricochet and Adam Cole. Um, boy, <laughs> I was hyped for this match all week. That's a, that's a lot of star power yeah, right you, there. You heard, me, uh, you heard me getting hyped about this match just when they announced it last yep. week. I was excited to see their rematch. They, uh, Of course, Ricochet had taken the North American title off of Adam Cole, the inaugural North American champion, just a few months ago in a fantastic match at NXT TakeOver. Um, this was a rematch, and it was just just off the off the chain <laughs> it's yeah. just fantastic see i really need to go back and watch this one this R- one you Ricoch- see. ricochet is my favorite well second favorite nxt guy yeah. just slightly behind a lester black mm-hmm. like i fucking love watching him wrestle he's kind of he's kind of poor on the mic at least from yeah, what i've he's seen got, he's got work to do there that's why he's, that's the only reason he's still in nxt i think but he's <laughs> such a badass in the ring Oof. he does some Oof. crazy insane you know maneuvers in the ring and it's it's so cool and fun mm-hmm. to watch, and I would love to see him Chills. live. Chills. The yep. one and only is absolutely the right nickname for him. That's why they call him the one and only. This match was great. Uh, Adam Cole went after Ricochet's knee early on, a smart strategy to try to keep him grounded, keep him from hitting those high-flying moves. Ricochet did a great job making it look like you know he was really selling that knee injury. He was really hurt. Um, he was vocal when he was feeling that pain. Um, he, he was able to modify his offense a little bit to account for being on one leg. He even hit a springboard off one leg, which was just (laughs) unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This guy's amazing. It's just, he's an athletic freak. Like I've never seen. Uh, and so I can't wait to see what he does, 
um, in the next year or so. He's still a new guy, but uh, he's he's rising through the ranks quickly. So Ricochet was able to get the win in spite of the knee injury. Uh, getting a little concerned about Adam Cole. Um, this is the third pin I can think of him eating just in the past few weeks. He was pinned clean by Tyler Bate at the World's Collide Tournament. Uh, he was pinned during the halftime heat. Uh, six-man tag and now he's eating a pin against ricochet so hopefully adam cole will start to recover a little bit and maybe get a couple wins in these next few weeks um him and undisputed era have lost a little bit of their luster with them losing the tag titles and adam cole losing a few so hopefully they recover soon um but this was a good show uh just on the strength of the main event i'm giving it an eight and a half out of ten because you just you don't see singles matches like that on wwe television very often when you do you get a bunch of commercial breaks you don't get them (laughs) in nxt all the more reason to watch nxt if you're not watching it yet and you like wrestling watch nxt it is a quality wrestling show week in and week out yep and then finally we have our nxt uk show which again wasn't able to watch this week just because of time crunches, mm-hmm. but uh, you can fill us in here. Yeah, this was this was really a missable NXT UK show. So this was filmed, I believe, this was filmed Royal Rumble weekend, which was a few weeks ago. So okay. uh, they weren't able to do much storyline building for that reason because they were pre-taping it. Um, we got to see Tony Storm um, cut a promo to start the show uh about you know being the champion and taking it off rhea ripley rhea ripley did not like that she came out she started talking about all the things she hates about tony storm she got heckled by the crowd a little bit the crowd was not nice to rhea ripley which bothered me because i love me some rhea ripley uh but she's got to learn to handle that heat a little bit better if she's going to be this uh, monster heel character that she is and i think she will i think she'll pick that up she seems like a person that learns fast promo was mediocre the brawl after the promo was pretty good um following that we had the scottish supernova getting on tv for a singles match for the first time in a little while uh he is another guy that wrestles on 205 live in addition to nxt uk uh so we got to see him go against the irish ace jordan devlin they had a very entertaining match i like i like both those guys a lot for what they do in the ring uh i'm increasingly a fan of jordan devlin every week i think his heel work is excellent i think his in-ring skills are excellent um noam dar was able to get the win uh, with interference from Travis Banks. So they're continuing the feud between Travis Banks and Jordan Devlin, which has extended all the way back since before NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Uh, so we'll see if that's leading to anything bigger. Um, then in the women's division, we had Ginny defeating Mia Yim. So this was uh, one of their uh, cross-brand World Collides matches. Uh, Mia Yim from NXT and Ginny from NXT UK. Um, I'm not a huge Ginny fan, but I can certainly see what people see in her. She's really owning that heel fashionista character in a, in a way that's really, that's really compelling. Um, you know, this match was okay. Uh, it wasn't great, but it definitely wasn't bad. I was entertained by it. I love seeing Mia Yim, uh, get on TV, even if it is on NXT UK instead of NXT, I'd like to see her on NXT more often. Um, but it was a good showcase for both of them. Um, so it, it was a decent match. And uh, Ginny continued her her hot run as uh, as this heel character. She's been racking up the wins lately, so we'll see what they do with Ginny. And then in the main event, uh, the United Kingdom WWE champion Pete Dunne defeated Wolfgang in a pretty good match. Uh, they gave them some time. Um, it still felt like they cut short. I mean, this show felt like they cut about nine minutes short. I, I looked at the clock when it was over, and I couldn't believe that, that it was over already, but... Uh, this was a pretty good match. Um, this is what you would call an average Pete Dunn match, but an average Pete Dunn match is most people's best match. So <laughs> it was still very, very entertaining, high nice. quality stuff. Very nice. Not Pete Dunn's best work, but even his average work is fantastic. So this match was pretty entertaining. Um, my major, so my my analysis would be that the wrestling in NXT UK is on point right now. Um, but they need to start building some storylines. They do not have, they have not been building the storylines yet. Uh, it seems like they've got a lot of guys in holding patterns. It seems like Ginny's in a holding pattern. Uh, the champion Pete Dunn is in a holding pattern after he defeated Joe Coffey in Blackpool. Um, it seems like, uh, like the Irish ace Jordan Devlin has got a little bit of a feud with Travis Banks going. This seems to be the one storyline that they are building consistently. Um, they've still got Liguero who has been showing up just about every week until this past week that they don't really have a feud for either. So they've got to get some storylines going, but the wrestling's on point and, uh, that's a good starting point. So, uh, for this episode, I'll give it a seven out of 10 just because the wrestling was pretty high quality across the board. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Good showings by... At least three of the shows a very strong showing by uh, SmackDown this week. Mm-hmm. So uh, kudos to the SmackDown team who continues to put out very, very, a very good product 
I you know, can't believe the same people run Raw and SmackDown. It just it's boggles very, the mind. It makes no sense. <laughs> and it just makes it more clear that Raw clearly has a talent deficit. Uh, perhaps not only in not the for ring. Long. Not, not for only, long. Not only in the ring, but perhaps, <laughs> you know, in the writing, mm-hmm. writing booth there. Absolutely. So we'll see. Now, let's go ahead and touch on some news. What do you got for us, Dan? All right. So Jimmy Uso was arrested in Detroit. The past uh, couple days ago, um, apparently, this is a report from TMZ, uh, Naomi was driving, Jimmy Uso was in the passenger seat, they went the wrong way down a one-way street in downtown Detroit, which I've heard from people from Detroit is a very easy thing to do because of the way that the city's laid out. I mean, it's easy to do here in Columbus. Yeah, like, no kidding. <laughs> so. And uh, so apparently, what was reported is that Naomi was asked to get out of the car. Jimmy Uso was asked to stay in the car. Jimmy Uso did not stay in the car. He got out of the car, took his shirt off, and squared up <laughs> with the police officers, <laughs> apparently attempting to fight them. Uh, oh, that is the most uh, football dad thing ever. <laughs> uh, apparently, he's sorry. He thought this was America. Uh, but <laughs> they didn't actually get into an altercation. Uh, so that's the good news. Uh, that probably means that he'll get, a, get away with a slap on the wrist. It was just a disorderly charge, but you know, not a great thing to be doing just a few days before you get a title yeah. shot against the boss's son. And not, not that the WWE has ever been very harsh, uh, towards people that get in trouble with the law. Yeah, if they were, they wouldn't true. have any cast left. That's true. Um, Jeff Hardy, anyone? <laughs> but we'll see if it kind of affects the uh, big title match that they're mm. planning uh, with McMiz at the Elimination Chamber pay per view. Mm-hmm. They may be punished. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the big drama of the weekend uh, it seems that Corey Graves' wife decided to air some of his dirty laundry. Um, very publicly publicly posted an instagram, instagram story yep. claiming that uh, apparently Corey graves and mella is money were uh getting down while Corey graves was still together with Hot. his wife who is also the mother Hot. of his three children Hot. uh carmella is apparently a friend of the family knows the kids so knows the wife so it same. seems like if this is true uh does not look good for Corey or Carmella. No. Of course, Corey is the bigger offender here, but both of them don't come out looking good, if eh. this is true. But it kind of fits their characters. Let's face <laughs> it. Uh, maybe they play these characters so well, specifically yeah. Carmella when she's a villain. Kayfabe will never die. I'm sorry, but Carmella's not a baby face. She never will be, in my eyes. She's always going to be a villain. She's adorable. That's come the only, on. That's the only thing she's good at. That's, this whole like, you know, baby face team up with R-Truth is just ridiculous, mm-hmm. and it needs to stop. <laughs> just let our truth win stuff and do his thing by himself he doesn't need hey. carmella doing hey. her moonwalk hey i'm a fan of fabulous truth so i'm not gonna be hating how dare you and finally on the news uh as we alluded to in our introduction d generation x has been named the first entrance to the wwe hall of fame class of 2019 yeah. um that will include triple h Shawn michaels x Pac, road dog and china um, so for a couple of those guys, that'll be their second induction. I, 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 Shawn Michaels for sure. I believe Ric Flair and maybe one or two others are the only ones to get multiple inductions. I would have to double check that. But it's a very short list. Um, Shawn Michaels will be added to it. Uh, China yeah. is somebody that they've kind of stayed away from for a while. Some of the problems that she had after she left the company, some of the bad blood that was still um, simmering between them at the time of her death. Yeah. Um, but it's nice that they decided to include China with that because D Generation X was definitely not complete without China. So it's good to see that they've uh, they've taken that step towards kind of reconciling her image within the company. For sure. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of fun to see uh, X Pox names uh, back in the news again. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a guy that everybody seems to have forgotten about, but I, mm-hmm. I I thought he was really entertaining. Speaking of people forgot about, I forgot about Billy Gunn, who will also be included. <laughs> uh, Billy, yep. Billy, Glenn, Billy Gunn is now in enemy territory, so maybe that's why I was forgetting him. Yeah, We're going to kind of pretend he doesn't exist, but he was on the list. So he's going too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty good uh, to see all around that everybody's getting the credit mm-hmm. for being the entertainers they were. Obviously, it was pretty much spearheaded by Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Absolutely. I mean, if everybody else was removed from the equation, they would still be D Generation X. As they were several you know? years later. <laughs> uh, but 
all that being said, the the rest of the cast did contribute quite a mm-hmm. bit early on, especially at a critical uh, point in wrestling history, too. I mean, D Generation X was instrumental in turning the Monday Night Wars. WCW was really winning the Monday Night Wars at the time that D Generation X took off in popularity. Uh, obviously, their Nitro Invasion segment is one of the most famous wrestling segments in history. It was one of the key moments in those wars and in turning the tide towards the WWF, and is uh, a major contributor to where we are today with the company. So it's absolutely. good to see them getting that honor. Yep. So, really cool to see you all around. Uh, I think that wraps up all the news, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, we'll have more for you next week on the new episode. Again, this is getting out a little late because uh, we had to get everything set up, uh, logistically speaking, for the new show. Um, but everything is up and running and uh, really on pace to become more regular. Uh, expect a release over the weekend of the next episode. Uh, but uh, for now, that's all the news we'll give you. And then, obviously, because it's a few days later than we're pretending it is, mm-hmm. uh, we don't want to touch on too much news uh, to kind of spoil the next episode's content. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss our topic. What topic do you got for us, Dan? Yeah, so the topic that um, we're going to talk about this week is who should face Asuka or we could alternatively phrase it what should we do with asuka because i don't think wwe knows so let's come up with some ideas for them (laughs) so asuka has not been appearing on the televised show pretty much at all she had royal rumble she had a very 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 brief promo video Mm -hmm. that was pre-recorded shown in the middle of smackdown and then forgotten about Mm -hmm. very quickly and um, she has been present for the in-house shows, um, the the one where Becky Lynch apparently uh, re-injured her leg mm-hmm. uh, thanks to a vicious attack from Charlotte. Yes, um, the heel queen in full force. What I noticed in that shot of the kind of recap that was on the regular shows was that Asuka was there. Mm-hmm. So uh, she's still wrestling, just yeah. not on TV, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is kind of disappointing because she's a title holder. And she happens to be my favorite female wrestler. Um, and it's as a fan and as a person that thinks, you know, title holders should be required to at least appear once uh, every two weeks or three weeks, you know, on TV. Mm-hmm. It's just not happening. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when uh, Shinsuke had his U.S. title and he just wasn't wrestling on the main show. He was on the pre-shows and whatnot and in the in-house shows, but he just wasn't doing anything on the show and i I think it was a similar situation where they're just like we don't know what the fuck to do with this guy Mm -hmm. you know and uh i think you're completely right i think it's more on the staff than the the talent itself i think she's clearly there she's clearly still earning her paycheck and these in-house shows and you know shooting promos and all that stuff Uh, she's clearly not injured they're just they just don't have anything to do with her and i think it speaks more to a problem uh with the business as a whole as opposed to uh just the the character herself i think it's more that they just don't have good female villains other than charlotte and they have kind of nia Jax, but let's face it she's not always the most fun to watch and she's on raw so yeah. they don't have nia Jax for, yeah, Asuka for smackdown they for yeah. smackdown they've got nothing <laughs> so the cupboard is empty folks <laughs> there's just nobody for her to face and i think that's the big problem with making characters like carmella a baby face mm-hmm. and attaching her to our truth and making Sasha Banks a baby face so she can team up with, uh, you know, Bailey and potentially uh, win the tag team title, the first woman's tag team title. But it really compromises the rest of the business when you do these kind of fan moves that you're just doing to kind of give a little fan service and kind of, you know, uh, lend a little something that has to be done in order to achieve a certain goal at the end. You know, it, these goals, if you think they're worthwhile, and obviously the the tag team match is probably worthwhile, maybe not so much with Carmella, um, but I, I think you have to be careful not to sacrifice and, you know, cut off your own limbs in order to achieve these goals, you know. Um, and I think they've kind of crippled Asuka as a character, and I, I hope it doesn't generate some kind of resentment like they've kind of earned themselves with Dean Ambrose, where they very much mishandled Dean Ambrose and how they wrote him for, you know, months, I'd say, before he, and he he's just now mm-hmm. finally becoming <laughs> the Dean Ambrose mm-hmm. we remember, and it's because he's not staying with the company, allegedly, mm-hmm. you know, he's taking his, you know, 
time and effort elsewhere to earn a different paycheck because he just doesn't like what they've been doing with the character supposedly Mm -hmm. um and i i'm afraid that they're going to do this to asuka and it's going to generate a lot of resentment and we're not going to see much of asuka anymore and she's not going to re-up her contracts and i i think the same thing might be happening with shinsuke with this weird dynamic where they're trying to reunite him with rusev day and all this you know Mm -hmm. silly nonsense that they're just kind of forcing because they don't really have a plan Mm -hmm. they don't really have Mm -hmm. They don't have a goal with these characters. They don't seem to have any idea of what to do with them now that they do have titles, uh, specifically Asuka. But um, it's just, it seems to be very poorly handled and uh, it's very disappointing as a fan. Uh, you know, I want to root for the Empress on TV. I don't, mm. I don't want to have to see one promo every month and then cross my fingers and hope that she appears at some point and is relevant. You know, because this Becky Lynch storyline is kind of overshadowing everything across the women's division. Um, it's just how I see it, you know, as the casual guy. But it it really is disappointing. And how do you, how do you interpret it, and how do you feel about it? Yeah, I think uh, I think they're running into the same problem that they've had for years now, which is just how do you balance making certain people big stars, which is a priority, and which is something that a lot of fans complain about with WWE is that they don't make enough stars. But in order to make a star, you've got to make somebody stand out from everybody else. The problem with that is then if you have someone standing out from everybody else, how do you have depth in the division so that when you have someone like Asuka win a championship, she has credible challengers. So the fact is that they've made the SmackDown women's division revolve around three people for the past six months, months, which is Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Asuka. And now that Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch are tied up with Ronda Rousey and are not available, there is nobody in behind them to bring any kind of credible challenge to Asuka, so they don't know what to do with her. And for me, I mean, I feel like there's a simple fix here, which is just give her some squash matches against some local talents, keep her hot, keep her looking intimidating, get a winning streak going for her, keep talking about how you know who's going to stop the Red Hot Empress who has been on a tear since she made the man tap out at the Royal Rumble. Uh, until you have somebody emerge as a credible contender. I think you can have Mandy Rose fill that role. You know, the, this is the problem with rolling out the tag titles when they are, is now Mandy Rose is in Fire and Desire, and they're they're tied to the tag division. Yep. Um, I thought she would have been a good choice. I don't know if you can use her now. <laughs> um, there's certainly Nikki Cross, uh, who kind of isn't committed to either brand yet. Uh, her and Asuka had some fantastic matches in NXT and and have a lot of in-ring chemistry, yep. uh, but they haven't built Nikki Cross up very much so far. She just lost to Ruby Riot on Monday, um, so they're really in a tough situation. Uh, the only thing I can think that they can possibly do with Asuka is turn her heel. Um, I, I, I don't. I prefer her not as a heel. I like seeing her squash bully type characters. I think that's what she does best. Yeah. Um, but that would be one solution that would open up some options. The other option I think is, is move Alexa bliss. And I've been, I talked about this in episode one also is that I think that she needs to go to SmackDown and preferably she should go SmackDown before the superstar shakeup. I know that that's a tough thing to pull off. They really want to maintain the integrity of the two separate brands, but she's got nothing going on right now. And Oscar needs a challenge and Alexa bliss seems like the perfect person to feud with her for a few weeks and moment of bliss. Let's face it. It's awful. It's terrible. It's really cringeworthy. It's hard to watch. It's a waste of her mic talents. I think she's one of the best on the mic in the company. And it is a waste of her talents doing that. Horrible, cringeworthy segment, which only exists for someone else to interrupt and then completely forget Alexa was even there. Yep. I think that she has way too much star power and way too much uh, mic talent to be relegated to that role. So I'd love to see Alexa Bliss move, but besides that, I don't have a lot of ideas. There just aren't a lot of people available. The only people I think that would be credible challengers or could at least be built to them in the next few weeks are tied up in the tag division or they're on Raw. So... It's tough. Uh, I think maybe you can have. I think maybe you can have Nikki Cross uh, build up her for a couple of weeks, and then maybe they can keep each other bu- busy at Fastlane. Uh, but this was also the other reason I was opposed to the triple threat between Charlotte, Becky, and Ronda at WrestleMania. Was Charlotte versus Asuka 2.0 is a WrestleMania worthy title match, and that would be a fantastic feud, just like it was the last time. Only last time Asuka spent the entirety of their feud on Raw. Whereas now they're on the same show, there's a lot more flexibility as far as promos and confrontations and things like that. So, you know, if it was up to me, I would I would have Charlotte 
be the WrestleMania opponent, which you start building after Fast Lane, and I would build Nikki Cross up as much as you can these next couple of weeks, have her face Asuka at Fast Lane. And in the meantime, while Nikki's building, I would have Asuka do a couple of squash matches against local talent to keep her hot, to keep her exposed, to keep her on everyone's minds. Yeah. That's the only idea I really have there. I mean, it kind of reeks of, uh, you know, to make an analogy here of uh, the, the person who's always ready to make the big repairs, you know on their car say their car breaks down your transmission goes out and they're like yeah i'll drop all this money to fix the transmission so it runs good as new when all they really had to do was change the fluid once in a while and that's that's how it feels with oscar i feel like if they just did the general everyday maintenance things would be much better going forward they'd have a lot more to work with and they'd have more star power so they don't have to have you know hour long matches with their biggest superstars just to you know pull in eyeballs every week you know uh, it would be nice to see oscar get the credit she's due you know holding the belt you mm-hmm. know yeah if she wasn't holding the belt okay i can kind of understand you know you got a lot of events coming up you got a lot of storylines you're trying to work in i get it but she's a title holder mm-hmm. just like shinsuke was you know with the u.s title uh just let the stars do what they do best, you know, and it doesn't have to be a long match. It doesn't have to be a big match, but let them get some time, Mm -hmm. you know, let them get something, anything that'll pacify fans and justify why they have the belt. It's the biggest problem with Brock Lesnar is we never fucking see him. Mm -hmm. He always has the belt and we never fucking see him. Mm -hmm. So the belt never changes hands. There's never any risk involved. He's supposed to be this big, intimidating, dominating force. Thank you, Paul Heyman. But he just never does anything. Mm-hmm. He's just always in the studio talking shit, you mm-hmm. know, having Paul Heyman come out and talk shit for him and then say, is not here, you mm-hmm. know, and then bring out someone else like Bobby Lashley to pose and do something stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that's how it feels. And it's not it's not equal in that Brock Lesnar just doesn't go to shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Asuka does go to shows. She's obviously going to these small town, you know, house in-house shows you know, to enter- entertain the local fans and still contribute to the brand and earn her paychecks. She's doing everything she's supposed to be doing. Why is she not on TV? Mm-hmm. And it's, it, it, it wouldn't take much. And I think if they just did the everyday maintenance with these characters that they need to, uh, it would solve a lot of these problems. Um, They've really got to break this habit of putting belts on people without a plan. You mentioned Shinsuke. He was followed up by Rusev, who had the exact same thing going on. They yep. had no idea what to do with him. They yep. had no plan. They gave the belt right back to Shinsuke. Then they give it to our truth after that. I mean, I don't know and what's going on with the R truth. We, we have not seen our truth either. since the Royal they're Rumble, putting, I think. Right? They're just playing hot potato with these belts, and they yeah. don't know. They have no plan for the characters involved. And now, you know, they've really botched this with Asuka, probably one of the best in-ring performers among all female wrestlers on planet Earth. She just got one of her biggest victories of her career, making the man tap out at Royal Rumble, and they have utterly failed to capitalize on that momentum. Yep. It's really a shame for Asuka. It's a really disappointing way to handle her first title reign on the main roster. Um, so they've really got to start. Uh, I don't know if they need to get their writers, writers together and do a storyboard, because I don't understand why they don't seem to have long-term plans when they put these belts on people, and they're devaluing the belts as a result. Yeah, and I think it lends credence to another problem that we can probably discuss on another episode, but there's too many belts. Mm. There's just too many. We we have too many championships. Like it, the ones that are coming up like the women's tag team division, that's one that was necessary. Mm-hmm. We need to have a women's tag team belt. Mm-hmm. That's one that needs to be introduced and is going to be introduced. Mm-hmm. Um but we don't need an intercontinental and a WWE and then a US title and then a, a you know this it's too many belts just you know pick a couple maybe you know and focus on those ones you know maybe do you what professional you know fighting sports do and have like a weight division you have three weight divisions and that's it you know for each of the shows they have three weight divisions and that's it i think that would be a fine way to handle it but there's just too many belts it's 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 overwhelming it's too many there's too many uh people fighting for belts that have no value and don't matter and they have so little value in fact that they're not even being featured on the 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 weekly shows on a regular basis and it's it's disappointing and i think it's another one of those things that could be an easy fix you know uh, obvious exceptions are the ones like the tag team title for the women's division which is something that needed to happen and absolutely mm-hmm. should have happened a long time ago mm-hmm. you know there's enough talent in the ring nowadays that they it's something that needed to occur and be introduced but there's 
other belts that I think are just pretty much worthless, you know? I think it's about time they unify the tag title belts. And honestly, I just uh, wrote that down as a potential future topic, future big topic for yeah. further discussion, yeah. because I think that that would be a very easy way to condense the belts a little bit. Now you're going to have women's tag t- champions. They're going to have three different tag championships total between two shows. Uh, I think they could probably unify the tag belts and have a women's tag division on one show and a men's tag division on another show or have them uh, be interbrand. That would that would certainly cut down on the tag division. Um championships and the devaluation there yeah but uh that'll be a potential big topic for another episode for sure <laughs> for sure so uh i want to thank you all for sticking with us through the show uh, i think it, it was a pretty short one uh again because we're kind of rushing things we got to do another episode in a couple days here uh once we get all the the weekly shows out um and we do apologize for the slight delay on getting this episode out. Again, we were getting all the infrastructure set up. We are officially on Stitcher. We are officially on YouTube. Under the Hit the Books umbrella and Stitcher, we're actually a separate show. So you actually don't have to be subscribed to both just to get the one. Uh, so it's a little easier to organize. iTunes, uh, we are posted on iTunes. However, I think we still are waiting for the final approval. It has to go through their little algorithm and get approved. Um I, I don't think I saw an email from them yet. So that one's coming. It should be down the pipeline pretty quick as long as there's no uh, hiccups in that system. And then Spotify is something that's coming up real quick. Uh, it's probably the one of the more popular uh, services out there. And a lot of people have requested that we put our shows, hit the books, and uh, hit the ropes on Spotify. So I'm working on that. It's just a little bit of a tedious runaround because they have a different infrastructure than iTunes and Stitcher does where they just read a straight RSS feed. Uh, very technical, but there's uh, there's a different procedure that we have to go through in order to get that set up. So uh, once again, I want to thank you for sticking with us. Uh, be sure to check out our website, htbvids.com for more content and lists and articles. And uh, we're going to get our blog started and all that stuff uh, once again. Uh, if you want to check out our comic book show, hit the books. It, that's listed there on YouTube, on Stitcher, and iTunes as well. Uh, I think we're about to uh, send out episode 39 pretty soon here, and that comes out every Wednesday or Thursday uh, of every week. And um, we, of course, have our Patreon page. If you would like to contribute to our Patreon page and help us sustain the show, it's patreon.com forward slash hit the books. Uh, you can donate as little as a dollar and uh really the sky's the limit after that so we have little tiers or little reward tiers uh we will update them for the hit the ropes show we currently don't have the tiers for hit the ropes uh if you are contributing on behalf of this show instead of hit the books but if you contribute it does help both shows it's a collective effort it's a collective patreon uh and if you don't want to contribute that's perfectly fine if you're not able to contribute it's perfectly fine we're grateful to have you here with us anyway so uh feel free to reach out to us on twitter at htbvids feel free to reach out to us on facebook at facebook.com forward slash hit the books and again you can email us at hit the books vids vids at gmail.com if you want to submit any topics for the show any questions for either one of us uh or uh send us in any cosplay or uh uh anything like that for the comic book show or perhaps for the wrestling show who knows <laughs> uh i've seen so some... many ideas yeah uh, so feel free to send those in to us and uh, talk to us in the YouTube comments down below and um, let us know what you think and what you think we can improve. All right. So on behalf of Dan and uh, myself, I really want to thank you once again for sticking with us on Hit the Ropes podcast episode two. We will see you next week. In response to this great honor, they have two words for you. Suck it! (laughs) That's awesome. That's so good. So good. It's the perfect intro. All right. Make sure everything's still working good. Oh, my God. Look at that. (laughs) That EQ right there. All right.